All right, well, we just got back from E3, still going through the footage for that, but uh, we decided to take a day off to rest. I slept for about 12 hours, I don't know about you. And uh, today was the day we saw Prometheus. Probably, geez, you were... Were there any other movies you were more excited about than seeing them, Prometheus? Not really. Avengers, Avengers maybe? I, I really wanted to see Avengers, but in terms of anticipation, this one was, was up there just because of my love for the series. Yeah, I, I really think for sci-fi fans, there if there were many if, if there were other films that were more highly anticipated than Prometheus, I can't think of one. Um, I this is pretty much the number one on my list too for, for anticipation. And um Wow. How do we go about saying this? Um well uh, it, it was even more fueled by the fact that pretty much all of the movie critics that I follow uh, gave it, you know, four out of four stars or five out of five stars, perfect ratings. So, could not have gone into this one with more excitement, I think. I mean, other than dressing in costume, but whatever. I don't know. Uh, this movie is fucking offensive. This movie is a plate of ass. It, it, it is astoundingly bad. Just, just... Wow! Like, I was not ready for how bad this movie was. Like, I was even ready for it to be kind of disappointing. No. Like, you know, you, you people say, like, oh, your expectations were too high. No, like, seriously, that, that was the Star Wars argument, where your expectations were too high. No, um, I was kind of ready for this one to be underwhelming. I didn't think it would be. I thought it'd be pretty good. Me too. Uh, especially since... Rotten Tomatoes has been going down, down, down ever since it first came out. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something else. I've been a Ridley Scott apologist as of late. You know, everyone likes to bash on him. And I, you know, I like his stuff. Much to the, much to the humiliation of me at times. Because just going through his, his filmography recently, Hannibal, which... Isn't that bad when you consider that the the material it came from was fucking awful? Like, Thomas Harris wrote a terrible novel, but it somehow made an average movie. Uh, Kingdom of Heaven. I like Kingdom of Heaven. I love Kingdom of Heaven, the director's cut. It's, yeah. it's one of the few director's cuts which turns it into, an, a, a, in my opinion, a great movie. It's not just a, a very good movie. Sure. Uh, Robin Hood. Oh, I hated Robin Hood. Robin Hood was kind of shit. <laughs> it's, like, I'll even defend Robin Hood in that it's derivative, yes, but just as an action movie... I declare it's, him to be an outlaw! <laughs> like, it, it is derivative, but it's not bad. It's not it's pretty bad. <laughs> it's pretty bad. <laughs> I'm just saying... I'm defending the man. I've been defending him all along. Okay, okay. <laughs> and, and even up to this point, I'm like, go, I walked into the theater going like, okay, it's not going to be a masterpiece. I just want it to be an entertaining film. That's all I want from this is to be an entertaining film. And even with those low standards, I was... <laughs> yeah, so... Um, I noticed the camera's a little crooked. I'm going to fix that in a minute. But, uh, yeah, this was... Uh, in the beginning, it was, it was really, I was like, this is a beautiful movie. And that sense never left me, the fact that this is a really gorgeously shot movie with a lot of great effects. Um, but that's where the, the, the good stuff ends. I mean, it, from the beginning, I was like, wow, this is, I was riding high, I was like, this is a beautiful movie. And, and then I, I heard people talk. And then the people started talking. And immediately, there, there's one moment, and I'll pick it out in a minute, where, where I immediately was like, oh. And then I, I got really disappointed, and then it kind of became one of those laughably bad B-movies I used to watch. You know, I used, actually used to review a lot of these. Like, it kind of it kind of became one of those formula B-movies, and I was like, this is a really bad movie, but you could dig it on a, on a humor level. You know, where it's, it was kind of like one of those cheesy 80s bad movies, and I kind of, I was like, I was trying to, like, apologize for it, for that, I was like, you know, this is not a great movie, but it's funny, and then it kept going, <laughs> and going, and then it kept going, <laughs> and so it stopped being funny, and I started getting pissed, 
And then I actually really started getting like hostile towards this movie. I was, I was, at, there was one point where I just about jumped up and screamed "fuck you" at this movie. So, um, yeah, I, I usually get into films, into the whole right world back. movie experience, and then I get this self realization with the truly bad movies that that I just go, "Huh, this this isn't as good as I thought it would be," and and then the the excitement just wanes and, and wanes and wanes and the movie keeps going and going and going and suddenly you, you hit rock bottom and oh. go ahead <laughs> fuck <laughs> yeah so I may have actually overcorrected <laughs> okay so in a nutshell that's the review uh, from here to talk about the film we have to go balls deep into spoilers so yeah. I guess we can give a little bit more of a no. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. A, a spoiler free. I guess I hated the characters, uh, with the exception of like Idris Elba, who's a pimp, but he's in the movie for like eight minutes. This this is one of those movies where the only reason there's a movie to begin with is because the characters are the stupidest people who were ever born. Yeah, it, it, it's phenomenal how stupid. Every one of these characters is. And unlikable, really. And, and hateable, yeah. So, like, they're all assholes. You want to see them all die, and not in that, not in that like, Freddy Krueger, I want to see them all die way. You just, you're sick of them. My, and, my favorite character is the, is the robot. And he's essentially an antagonist, so... Yes, my, <laughs> I love the, the villain more than anyone Because he's the only guy with any kind of pragmatism essentially, you know, who, who... He has a definite, clear agenda that doesn't make you want to strangle him. Uh, you know, it's it's not a nice agenda, but it's it's clear, you know, and, and he goes about it efficiently and doesn't make any mistakes. Well, one, but... You know, uh... But yeah, the, the only reason there's a movie is because these characters are all thoroughly incompetent and hateful, and you're not, like, actively rooting for them, for them to die. You're just sick of them. And that's that what kills the tension in this movie. Yeah, what what after, doesn't make it a horror movie or a, or a thriller or anything like that is, is you're so pissed off at what these people are doing. Yeah, that it, it, it's not suspenseful. Yeah, so it's it's just after five minutes you're just you just want them to leave. You know, it's just <laughs> you're just like go away. Get out of here. <laughs> they're not they're not that kind of funny annoying where you really hope they die. You're just like I I don't want to see them die. I'm just I'm just bored of them. You know, just. And there's, there's characters who are introduced, or uh, you see them at the end, and I'm like, who is that guy? Like, there's this guy, there's like this Asian dude who just hangs out on the ship, and there's like this guy with the Asian dude who's the only name I know him by, is the guy who hangs out with the Asian dude, who's completely anonymous. And he's like, we're going to fly the ship, and I'm like, oh. uh, So yeah, um, from here on out, we pretty much have to rage against this flick, and to do that, we're going to just tell you the whole movie. So, here, but here's the thing, you're going to see the movie anyway, so like, either go see the movie and come back to this, or if you don't really care about spoilers, just keep watching. But, you know, honestly, whether or not we tell you to avoid this movie like The Plague, if you're at all an Aliens fan, or at all a Ridley Scott fan, you're going to go see this flick, you know, so. I would have. Yeah, so if I had if I'd come back and told you this movie's fucking horrible, you wouldn't have believed me. You really wouldn't. You'd have been like, Spoonie doesn't like anything, you know, so you go see this movie. No, seriously, I, I, I can't believe... I cannot believe how the good reviews this movie has gotten. It's it's astounding to me. Yeah. It's not one of those things where I'm being contrarian or I'm hating on something to to because people are on the bandwagon, you know, people people accuse me of that of hating. Four out of four, five out of five. They're saying there's nothing this movie could have done better. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, and so like I this want This is the masterpiece. I, I I get accused a lot of of being contrarian or hating things just because people like them. No, I wanted to like this movie. You have no idea how much I wanted to like this movie because it really did look like a return to form of the of the two alien movies that I love, you know, Alien and Alien. So I was like, you know, great. Now, that, to be fair, this has nothing really to do with it, it's it's set far before any of this crap, I imagine. So it's like technically a prequel. It's technically a prequel, but uh, the series really, really it's it's divergent. But you know, it's it's that kind of feeling. It's that kind of they're, they're, at least they were promising that kind of that kind of movie. And Oreo has a squeaky toy. So um, yeah. So enter spoilers. Uh, 
it starts off with this archaeological ex uh, ex expedition, and they find these cave paintings. And so the, the cave paintings all feature one similar uh, symbol of essentially like these towering aliens pointing to essentially a star system on, on the wall. And so, you know, these civilizations, thousands of years removed, separated by thousands of miles, could never have come into contact with each other. All have, all have the same symbol. And so, you know, because of this, they go to the, the Wayland Corporation, and the, the president, you know, Mr. Wayland, who I'll get to, uh, believes them that there's some kind of race beyond the stars who engineered the human race and funds this trillion dollar expedition with the ship called Prometheus. And they send them out there. Here's my first problem. And this becomes a problem right away where they, there's a trillion dollar ship. And it starts off with showing this crew, uh, showing this card detailing the crew. The crew is 17 people. Right away, I'm like, 17? You sent 17 people for first contact. You didn't send a diplomat. You didn't send guards of any kind. There are no, repeat, no soldiers of any kind on this ship. You sent a stoner geologist. Yeah, they sent. It's all scientists, and now I get that because this is a science expedition. But to have no safety fallbacks of any variety, nobody at all qualified for first contact should this arise. You know, um, no secondary vessels to provide security. No means of emergency contact to Earth in case things go pear shaped. And they do. You immediately see this expedition is doomed from the beginning. And like again, like you keep falling about, well, there is no movie. But there's, there's, there's having no movie, so suspending your disbelief. And then there's just fucking, this would never happen. This is, there's, there's science fiction and there's science bullshit. But things get worse. I'm things get so much worse. Yeah, but right away I'm nitpicking, right? So I'm like, so you've, you've got this expedition. They go down there. Sure enough, they find some kind of like structure. So they land their ship down there and they, uh. They they get inside. Well, well, the, the the first point where, like I said, the moment they talked was when they brought it out. Oh, okay, yeah. My my thing my emotions down on this was they get for, ready for the briefing. Yeah. The briefing so that the audience can know what's going on. Yeah. And there's two things that happen that that were just embarrassing. One is they drag out uh, who's supposed to be Waylon uh, yeah. through a holographic message so telling them what's going on. The owner of the company. Mr. Wayland, they, they, they bring up this hologram so he can personally tell them how important their mission is. So this, this, big, this big hologram pops up. Holograms, which, by the way, are never seen before or since in any of the other movies that take place in the future. Far in the future, in fact. But anyway. It, it turns out it's Guy Pierce. Yeah. And he's in the worst old person makeup. No, it's not the worst. In years. But it's very, very obvious old person makeup where it's it looks like Christopher Lambert in this movie called The Quest where you see like the, the rapper story where he like make, they make Christopher Lambert look all droopy and, and melty and like really you mean Jean-Claude Van Damme oh yeah yeah I'm sorry Christopher Lambert uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme sorry. oh jeez yeah, Johnny Jean Knoxville was a more convincing old guy looks, in the Jackass movies yeah he looks like uh, Jean-Claude Van Damme in The Quest or Johnny Knoxville in like Jackass 2 you know so, and immediately they're going, what the fuck are you doing here, Guy Pierce? Yeah, so it's it, it's it's strange, because you never see Guy Pierce in a younger role, because like, you're thinking, oh, maybe it's a dual role where it's like him older and then him younger, and like that still wouldn't have made the old makeup good, but it still would have been clear, you know, why, why they did that. Um, but like, it's just really, it's it's obviously old person makeup, you know, it's it's... It's, and you just you're wondering like why did they do this? Why what was the point of this? Like okay, Guy Pierce is a good actor, but you couldn't just find an old guy. Like you couldn't you couldn't bring in Lance Heinrichsen. Yeah, like you couldn't find anyone who's even a little bit older. But I, then then they do the briefing and and so you have the two scientists, chocolate scientists, come up and give their presentation. They're just like. This proves that there were aliens here and that they created us. And and the one guy goes, "How do you know yeah, any like, of this? Like, do you, you have any facts to bring the, yeah. to, to this?" 
And she, she says one of the dumbest lines ever in this movie, which is hard to do, but she's just like, no, I don't, but I believe it. No, no, so she, that's says, good enough. she says, no, um, they, they set it up by saying this, this, this female scientist, I forget her name, no, Elizabeth, has this, uh, has this kind of troubled past where her father died and her father was a doctor in Africa or something like that. And so, uh, she sees a guy who's being carried away to a funeral and she's like, uh, where is he going? Or where do they go? Where do people go when they die? And he goes, well, the, the, we call it heaven, but they call it something else. And they, she's like, how do you know that's where they go? And the, the father says, well, that's what they choose to believe. So back to present, she goes, uh, we don't know what these aliens want, but we believe they engineered us as a species. And the, and the, the asshole guy with the weird hair goes, do you have anything to back that up? And she goes, no, but that's what I choose to believe. Worst scientist ever. That is not how scientists talk. <laughs> Okay, that's called that's called jumping to a conclusion or like a, a completely unsupported hypothesis. They also said something else that I can't remember too. It's just like he basically equated skepticism with idiocy. Oh yeah, when they discover the atmosphere is breathable, and she's like, uh, the guy's like, I'm gonna take my helmet off because the sensor says it's breathe breathable, and she's like, don't be stupid. You don't know what else is in the air. And he's like, don't be such a skeptic. And, like, pops his helmet. And I'm like, that's not being a skeptic. That's being prudent and cautious that there's Reasonable. not... Reasonable. That there's not some kind of fucking pathogen in the air. That there's not back, some bacteria or fungus or mold or... He's like, don't be such a skeptic. You know. And sure enough, he dies of an infection. <laughs> so, um, so, like, that was the moment where... Uh, the, when you see the really cheesy old guy makeup on Guy Pierce. Where uh, that immediately I kind of start checking out because everything in this movie is so gorgeous. And then there's this complete. It's just it's, it's such a contrast. To everything it's else. It's just bad. You know, it's it's bad and it's unnecessary. It's just not good. You know. So um, what else? Okay. So then they introduce this really kind of brute force exposition to Charlize Theron, who's she's not the captain. There was like three captains in this movie. Right. So the first thing is, Mr. Mr. Whalen goes up to the two scientists and goes, "As far as the mission's concerned, they're in charge." They're in charge. Then we meet Charlize Theron, who is obviously the authority figure here, and she starts like beating her chest, going, "Me, King Kong, me in charge of this mission," you know. And then they start landing the ship, and then the black guy who's in charge of the ship goes, "This is Captain Captain Willis or something like that. We're gonna land this ship," and I'm like, "Okay, they're in charge." He's the captain, and Charlize Theron is in charge. Who do we take orders from here? And all, that's what's funny is that never actually comes into play. Like, I actually thought they were setting up some kind of, like, a, a command structure argument where, like, I'm in charge of this ship, but I'm in charge of the sci uh, research, but I'm in charge of the military, something like that. I actually thought that's where they're going with this, and they don't. So there's this... I immediately start, I start, like, kind of getting confused by the command structure here, and I get confused for no good reason, because it never comes up. <laughs> so, we meet Charlize Theron, and, and so, uh, they see that there's obviously alien presence here, and so Charlize calls the scientists into her chambers, and her chambers are the subject of an argument I could spend 15 minutes on, right by themselves. So, they go into her room, her, her, her room, let's just call it her room. And it's this big, expansive space with a fucking grand piano, this huge hologram wall that's playing classical music. Like it's it's basically it has its own bar. It has it has a bar, uh, everything. It's like it's like should the, have a barista in the corner. It's like it really is like a five star hotel bedroom, you know. And she starts and she's like, oh yeah, I like to have, I like to I like to make sure I'm living in the most comfort. I'm in the best possible. Place. This has this. This place has its own life support. Safest place possible. Yeah, safest. Just like this. This entire place has its own separate life support. And she, the the scientist is, is dicking around, and she's like, "Wow, you have this fully functional robotic surgical suite." And she's like, "Yeah, of course. I want. I always want there to be some kind of fail safe. Like I always want to be in the. I never want there to be a question of my own safety." And I'm like, "Wow, that's pretty impressive." Very foreshadowed, but okay. So keep this in mind, okay, that they introduce this fully functional robotic surgical suite that can carry out any surgical operation that there is. 
And keep in mind that Charlize Theron owns this. Okay? Just we have to we have to establish that as a foundation. We'll come back to this point. Okay? So they go into the Oreo. Hi Oreo. Oreo didn't see the movie, but she wouldn't have liked it. Okay, so they go down to the ship, they whip off their helmets like fucking idiots, and they start poking around. And they find this enormous chamber. First they find the engineer. Okay. One yeah. of the dead engineers. And two of the people go, This is freaking me out. I'm going home. Yeah, so So they split. And so they open up the chamber, which opens up to the giant rock head and all these little uh, canisters around yeah, it. Yeah, there's like canisters which are very reminiscent of the alien eggs, which I'm guessing that was no mistake. Yeah, so there's this big thing with a big head and the, the canisters. So they all start going around. And of course, immediately, they start fucking with it. You know, they, they start like poking the jars and shit, and Michael Fassbender, who plays essentially... Don't, don't touch anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't touch anything. And so immediately the Michael Fassbender, who's the, the robot essentially of the ship, immediately starts like rubbing his fists on it and like, let's see what this thing is. And immediately, of course, goo starts coming out of the fucking jars. Like this big black, obviously alien horror goo. And he's like, mmm, look at this. You know. <laughs> and so like He's, of course, very fascinated, but, you know, I'm actually giving Fassbender a little credit because his character is, like, a robot, so he's, like, not really afraid of infection or anything like that. I'm like, okay, okay. But, obviously, like, they start, like, sweating this copious amounts of, like, death oil, and then a storm starts blowing in. And I'm like, and they're like, this storm is really dangerous. It's blowing, like, fucking razor-sharp silica shards, and there's, like, electromagnetic shit, and you don't want to get in there. So they're like, we have to get out. So they all, they all get out. And they all evacuate, and they all get in their little dune buggies, and they go back in there, and they take the they take the alien's head, which conveniently was separated from the rest of its body, and they put it in a duffel bag, uh, they put it in this giant Ziploc bag, which they carried with them. And so they put it in this bag, and they drive it back, and there's, there's shenanigans where one of them gets caught outside the storm, but whatever. Then, as soon as they all get back to safety, they cut back to the two guys who left... Ten minutes ago, before they went in the chamber, guess where the two guys are? They're still in the facility. I almost, I almost yet out, let out a, a giant what? In the no, theater. you did, you did. You were like what? <laughs> now I have to backpedal a little bit. These two guys who left ten minutes before everyone else did are still in the ship, and they're lost. Zoom back about ten minutes previous to that. They first go in the ship. Everyone's kind of together, and they're going in the ship, and they're like, wow, this place is huge. We could get lost in here. And the guy with the weird hair goes, don't worry, I got this. And he whips out these two, like, uh, red tennis ball things, and he throws them up in the air, and the tennis balls, they start floating, and they start sweeping the whole area with, like, these red laser beams. And then he goes, these things will automatically map the entire facility for us. And so they fly off in opposite directions, he throws up two more, and they fly up in opposite directions, and they start mapping the, the on their own. They start flying around, and they start sweeping the place with lasers, and they start mapping the entire area. Okay, so automatically, get back on the ship. The entire place is slowly but surely getting mapped, like a video game. Okay, so ten minutes go by. The same guys go, "We're leaving," and they leave. Ten minutes after that, they're still in there, and they're lost. And I remind you, these are the guys who had the computer graphic robot mapping balls that he could read on his, like, wrist console. He's the guy with the map. Not just that, but there's a guy on the ship who sees everyone mm -hmm. on the giant map, and so if they said, we want to get out of here, he could very easily give them directions yeah. to go out. The captain, by the way, also has the map and is watching them. So, not only is the guy with the map lost, but the guy overseeing the mission, watching the guys, watching the map, doesn't even realize that they're lost until the storm has blown over them. Because he literally goes, he goes, wait, there's two guys missing. Where are they? Boop, boop. The fuck you guys doing in there? And they're like, we're lost and scared. It was a, it was a Kevin moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kevin! So now they're lost. And you know these guys are dead meat. 
Yeah. So immediately, the the. Dr- this is where it gets funny. This is where I started really started laughing. It was when it was getting surreal. It was so stupid. Yeah. They're getting high in their suits. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? Friday the 13th in we're, space? We're skipping ahead a little bit. Okay, so the first thing that happens is the captain goes, Well, it's getting cold in there, so you might as well put your helmets on and just try to ride the storm out. Okay, they go, That's a good idea. So they put their helmets on and they try to ride the storm out. Then, like, five minutes later, the captain goes, Hey, one of these robot drones that you sent out is detecting a life form about a click to the west. You two better go check it out. And they go, No! (laughs) And the captain goes, But I'm the captain. (laughs) No. And the two guys go, No! No, no. What happens is, he goes, Hey, you know how I said you guys were alone down there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not. There's a life form. It's showing there. It's about a click west of you. And he's like, oh, no, it, it's gone. <laughs> Must be a glitch. And they're just like, wait, where is this? We don't want to be anywhere near it. And he's just like, oh, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah. It's, Have it's, a nice night. It's kind of funny how that conversation <laughs> develops because we both kind of had it half right. He goes, wait, guys, you're not alone down there. There's a life form. You better go check it out. And they go, fuck you. So, like, right away, the first question, why did the captain send these two assholes to go check out the life form they don't know what it is? Like, unarmed, unequipped, and stupid. Right? So not exactly the best combination. So, like, okay, let's send the fucking geologist to go investigate the life form. Okay, right away, stupid. The two stupid guys actually wisely decide not to go check it out. And then the captain goes, oh, wait, no, I'm sorry, it's gone, it's gone. It must be a glitch. That was a glitch. Your fucking robot doesn't know a life form from... Have a good night's sleep. Then he's like, good night, guys. Good luck. <laughs> I'm like, man, Peter Elba's a dick. <laughs> so they go the opposite direction of the of the alien thing, which is the only smart thing anyone ever does in this movie. But guess where they go? They go right back to the room with the giant head and the thousands of oily fucking sweating death containers that are obviously like some kind of fucking alien egg. Okay? So... Then they go there and decide, this is where we're going to sleep. We're going to sleep here, and we're going to get high here. And, yeah, <laughs> the, the guy with the weird hair has somehow, like, got a hookah in his space suit. I don't know. So, like... Then, so, this is... The, but what's, what's funny is, this is even more obviously a bad place to stay than when they left it. Okay? Because not only are the alien jars, like, sweating this death goo... It is now, like, in an active, flowing stream. They're now in a pool. There's a pool of the shit, and it's, like, writhing and, like, making weird bubbly noise. Like, and they're like, no, let's 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 chill out here. This is a good place to sleep. And it gets dumber. It gets dumber! Because then this snake comes through the water, yeah. which looks like a giant alien penis. Yeah, okay, well, it looks like... First, I was like, Dianoga! Because, so like, from Star Wars, when the eye pops up, it's like... <laughs> So like okay, so go ahead. It's it's got the shaft and the balls. Yeah. And it's sticking up out of the water. And the one guy's reaction now keep in mind, this is the same guy who saw a dead alien and was like, I'm freaking out about yeah. this. He sees this giant dong come out of the water. Yeah. And he's like, Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, okay, so I'll reenact this for you. I know we're <laughs> stating the obvious again, but this guy sees an alien, goes, Oh shit, fuck this. And, just before, the, when, when the captain talks to them, they're standing in front of this pile of alien bodies, and they're freaked the fuck out by this. There's, like, literally, like a... Like a dead, tw- fossilized aliens. There's a mountain of them. A 12-foot pile of these dead aliens, and they're like, oh, shit, man. This is fucked up. This place is... We're gonna die here, man. And then the captain tells them to go... So, like, okay, so they go in this room with the jars, and then, literally... A translucent, pale, six-foot alien penis pops up out of the water. You can, it's like, it's got the fucking head, like, and it's like, whoop, whoop, whoop. And this guy, no shit, he's like, he's like, look! Have you ever seen anything like this? It's beautiful. And as if that wasn't enough, the alien still gives it warning, because... The balls on this thing pop open. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And it gives up. It gives an alien. <laughs> yeah. So like, this is this is the alien dong. Okay. This is the church. <laughs> this is the steeple. 
the alien dog is like, and the guy's like, it's beautiful. Look at this thing. And then it goes, that's the pretty much the universal sign that it doesn't like you and you should get away. Like, on what scenario do they think this would turn out to be a good thing? Okay, so so this thing, it goes, and the guy, got, there's this big orchestra sting, and he goes like, ah, ah, and the guy's like, the guy's like, dude, let's get out of here, right? He's like, no, I got this. And you know, he's like, he's like, no, 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 it's okay. Isn't it amazing? What? <laughs> and then it eats his face. And no, he's like, no, 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 no. He reaches out to touch it. He's like, hello, alien penis. Hi. Oh, you're a cute little penis, aren't you? I've, I've never seen hentai in my life. <laughs> oh, you're a cute little alien dog. Hello. And how are we? Ah! 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 So, it gets around his arm, breaks it Steven Seagal style. Yeah, yeah. And then rips open a suit, goes inside, goes full... Th- Deep throat. Yeah, him. deep throats him. And meanwhile, the guy he tries cutting. The other guy tries cutting it off, and like a weak acid hits him, and he goes face first in one oh! of his <laughs> Yeah, he falls face down in the alien sludge, which of course kills him. But yeah, well, it was. I, I still have to go into the alien thing. Okay, so like the alien thing wraps around his arm, and he's like, "Oh, oh it's squeezing! Oh shit!" It, it bites him in the hand, which I'm sure is bad. <laughs> so. It's, so he's like the other guy. The other guy who's uh, the the stoner. He's he's kind of like floating around as as the uh, he's kind of like hovering around trying to get a look at what's going on. Like this thing is around his arm, fucking squeezing him, and he's just kind of like, dude, are you okay, dude? Whoa, dude, it bit you, <laughs> dude. D- the fucking alien dong like leapt out and bit you, man. And he's like, cut it off! Cut it off! Ah! So like he cuts it off, he gets sprayed with the acid. The thing like jumps in his suit and fucking literally mouth rapes him and kills him. And then the other guy gets his face melted by the alien sled. So they're dead. Yeah. This, this so we never see anything else about that. No, no we, do. we do. Not the snake one, but we see the face melted guy. No, that was that was the guy that Fastbender did. No, 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 no. Oh, was it? The guy said was set on fire? Yeah. Wow, he was strong then. Okay. Yeah, we, uh, we, well, they turn over one body, because they like we, they found one and they turned him over, and then they got the guy got sick. Okay, anyway. So much is so much stupid is happening. I have to rewind again. Okay. <laughs> rewind a bit before all this shit happens. Before the storm. They're in there. And they see these jars, okay. And Fastbender is like, like, stroking the shaft of the jars, and he's like, "Hey, goo is coming out when I fucking pump it up and down like this." And they're like, "Dude," uh, they do, actually don't tell him to collect it. And they're like, "Don't touch." He's like, "What? Like this?" I think it likes it, <laughs> you know. So like, uh, he eventually, oh, they take the shit back to the ship. So he puts one of the things in the bag, and they go back to the ship. Okay, so now we're at present time. So now we got two things. We got. Uh, the alien jar and the alien head. All right. So first thing, which the alien head. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh no, just go. Okay. So they get the alien head. By the way, decontamination procedures. Good. What the hell is that? <laughs> They're not very good scientists. No. No. They they run a scanner over it and they go. And the computer goes no de- no contaminants and they're like good enough for me. So they. Let's not wear masks. No, <laughs> no eye protection, no masks, none of that shit. No glide. I'm su- I'd be surprised. If I went back and said they're probably wearing gloves, but I'd be stunned. So they go back there and they just like plop the fucker on a table, and they're like, "Wow, this is an authentic alien head. This is crazy shit, right?" Then, then they pull this idea right out of their ass. Yeah. They're like, "Maybe we can make it talk if we shoot <laughs> electrodes into it." Yeah, so, they, 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 go, they look at a tent and they're like, you see this shit? There's like this brown moving shit on his fucking head. This is like, this is like fucking alien psoriasis or some shit. Then they, then they pull out the, the futuristic car battery. Yeah, they get attach this. Attach it to his neck 
and they're just like, crank it up. Yeah, they're like, they're like, okay, well, they got this. There's this weird pulsing alien black death shit on his head. Let's make it do stuff. Yeah, by the way, no contaminants. Fuck you. So like, they take this charge thing, and they're like, well, what, what use does this thing have? Like, they, like it's like, uh, this would be better. They got like this, uh. Fucking Wiimote, okay? They got like this Wiimote with a needle on the end, and they're like, ah, oh, put the thing in its nervous system thing. And they're like, Pfft. so they jam it in there, and they're like, okay, now give it 30 amps. And they're like, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> and the alien head starts going like, and it like starts. It's, it's head starts like pulsing and the alien black death shit is like seeping out of his head and they're like 40 <laughs> like oh that's not good maybe we should put it under the hood yeah they're like they're like oh shit that's not good maybe we better like pull the fucking electrode out and it, of course they pull it out and it's still going <laughs> and so like they're like um um let's put it under glass so they like shove the fucker in like this this sterile hood or something like that and then the head explodes like it's something from fucking uh scanners or something double dare <laughs> like it explodes with like this radioactive green glowing shit and they're like, i'm like this is why we can't have nice things not very good scientists we had one fucking alien head and somehow you blew it up then they do a, a sample which says this is a hundred percent match. This is human. Yeah, it goes. They have the, they have this computer, which very they go they go. Oh, let's do the DNA sampling. So they like they analyze it and they go. Uh, so it goes alien sample and then they go. Let's do the human sample now. Human sample from where? So they go. And so like of course they do this thing where like the computer goes and it like lines them up and it goes identical match to human. Uh no. Uh, can you explain to me how a 15-foot, 400-pound albino yeah. is a human? If their DNA matched up exactly, then why Wouldn't are they... they look like us? Why are these, why are these fucking, like, pasty, white, muscle-bound, 13-foot motherfuckers... They're like Kratos. Yeah, they, well, actually, they do look like Kratos. <laughs> so, like... It, They're it, like 15-foot Kratos. It doesn't make any sense, and, like, um... Okay, so... They blow up the alien head, which you'd think actually would be rather hard, considering these things are like 35,000 years old. I don't know, just me. Not very good scientists, you know. No. I don't even know what they were hoping to accomplish here, especially considering they actually found like an active life form on the thing's fucking scalp, and their first instinct is to like electrocute it. Well, we, we cut to the other douchebag scientist, the guy, and he's, he's like moping, and... Fastbender goes up. Well, oh, like, yeah, well, we have to go back. Our hands little. The, the slide before this, they he opens up the jar. Yeah. Yeah. So Fastbender opens up the jar, which is like an alien egg, by the way, and he just sticks his fist in there. He like, <laughs> and pulls this fucking thing out, and it looks like a lava lamp, kind of. You know. So he's like, it's, it's like this. It's like a shard of kryptonite, really. It's like it's like a full of like obviously like nuclear green shit with like black flakes of badness in it and he like flips it over and then his first instinct is to like pop the top off it and like stick his finger in okay so that's go ahead so so he's talking with the scientist like why are you down he, he's just like we never got to talk to the aliens yeah and he's like but it's the greatest scientific discovery of all time he's like whatever yeah he discovered true alien life and you know science well beyond our reckoning and the guy's like whatever I just wanted to talk to him Thought talking to an alien would be cool. So Fastbender goes, Here, drink this vodka. <laughs> <laughs> and he totally sticks his finger in So he, 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 he infects the, the idiot with vodka laced with uh, the alien goo. Basically just to see what happens. Why not? Why not? <laughs> what if, well, who gives a fuck, right? So, <laughs> so then he goes off to have sex yeah, so with... He, uh, the, the other, the, the girl, other side. the girl with the dragon tattoo. Oh, that's a really <clears throat> Marvin. That's a, no, it's the original. Oh, the original. Okay. I was like, I, I didn't think I recognized Rudy Marvin. So yeah, so basically the two scientists are are boyfriend and girlfriend. So like they fuck, and uh, they like the storm passes, and they decide they're gonna go back and go look for the two guys. They pretty much got killed. By the way, still not deciding to carry any weapons. Yeah. Still not. 
Uh, because conveniently the storm cut out their cameras when they got eaten by the alien penis. Right. I'm guessing. I don't know. The script's not that good. All right, no, it's not. So, like, they go back into the base, and they go back to the place with all the, va the vases. They find the dead body, and by now, the male scientist guy, da not David, I don't even know his name, because fuck it, I didn't care. The male scientist guy, uh, a little bit before this, he, like, wakes up in the morning before they're about to go, and he's like, oh, I feel like shit. So, like, he, uh... He's looking in the mirror, and his eyes are all bloodshot, and like little alien, like a, oh, there's a big jump scare where like an alien fucking worm like flies out of his eyeball, and he's like, ah! And like, does he bother to tell anyone about this? Of course not. Why would they? Why would they need to know? <laughs> Why would they need to know that I've been infected with some alien plague? It's not like he could get medical treatment on board that show. No, it's not like we have a doctor on board or a fully functional surgical suite, and now it wouldn't have helped him. But like you'd think if you'd think you'd tell somebody, but his, his instinct is like, maybe I can ride this out. Yeah, he's like, I'll just let this ride. Maybe it's a twenty-four hour alien. Thing. It's not. So like the guy goes down there and immediately starts looking like shit, and he's like he start, he like stumbles over and the the uh, Elizabeth like looks in his eyes are all fucking red and like alien shit, and it, uh, she's like, Are you sick? He's like, No, no, I'm good. I'm good. And she's like, Okay. And then he falls over, like, shortly afterwards, and he's, like, got all those weird alien veins going on, and eventually they're like, oh, shit, we gotta go back. So, they go back to the ship, and, uh, he's looking like shit, and Charlize Theron's there with a flamethrower, probably the only prudent move, a uh, second prudent move ever made in this movie, where she's like, everyone's on the ship except that guy. And he's like, what? And so she sets him on fire. Don't, don't you have a heart? Yeah. <laughs> and she goes, no, I've seen these kind of movies. I know how it turns out. Right. So, like, <laughs> but, yeah, the, the scientist is like, don't you, like, where's your humanity? Where's your humanity? You're like, Oreo, come here. <laughs> Go ahead. I'm going to take the squeaky toy. <laughs> so, uh, eventually, the, the male scientist is just like, you know what? Kill me. She goes, okay. Yeah, so, so, uh. We're supposed to feel bad, I think, that, like, she wouldn't let him on the ship, even though he's obviously turning into, like, this alien freak show, and he's already started, like, throwing people around. I felt joy. Yeah, like, like they're, they're trying to help him up, and he's, like, his his voice is all feral, and he, like, shoulder throws a guy away, like, Aah! So, like, I'm like, dude, kill the guy. So, they kill the guy. And... Everyone's in con decontamination now. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 that's what's next. Everyone's going through decontamination, and, uh, fast bend. actually, uh, I've seen, so this is where I, this became a movie that I liked a lot better, actually. Um, uh, so, the female scientist is on a table, and, and Fassbender is, like, running a scanner over, and he's like, what are you doing? He's like, well, you did order us to go through, like, a full, full decontamination and blood work, so we're running it on you. And he goes, I have to ask, did you and, uh, did you and Alien Boy do it? Oreo, stop crying. So she's like, yeah. And I'm like, wow, they're going here, aren't they? So he runs the scanner over her abdomen and she's pregnant. He's like, but you're three months pregnant. And she's like, that's not possible. And of course, she's been fucked with an alien fetus now, right? And he's like, wow, that sucks. <laughs> and she's like, I just the fucking thing out of me! And he's like, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a robot, not a doctor. And she's like, I the fucking thing out of me! <laughs> Just get a coat hanger, goddamn. Oh, it. that's bad. No. <laughs> no but she's like, get the fuck out of here! And she's like, he's like, calm down. Oreo, please. Would you get another toy? Oh, you want the squeaky bone. She, I took her squeaky bone away, and now she's inconsolable. I'm a monster, I know. <laughs> she's crying. Would you find something else to abuse her, please? Yeah, get her, uh, get her, uh, raw chew. Okay, so, he goes, uh, he goes, like, calm down. Yes, there's an alien horror inside of you, but guess what? We're gonna fix this. I'm gonna knock you out on more drugs to kill a soccer team. And we're gonna put, uh, <laughs> And then we're gonna, we're gonna put you in cryostasis, so you're gonna sleep it out, you're gonna be fine. So, that's what he does. He knocks her out, and then two doctors come, and they're like, we're gonna take good care of you. And of course, she's got, like, freak alien strength now. She's just like, ah, and she, she's, she 
thrashes out of the fucking medical bay, and she starts running through the ship. And she's like, get this fucking thing out of here! Oh! And she's like, her stomach is all like writhing because there's alien shit in her. And, okay, a few things. First, this reminded me of a far better movie that is exactly like one of those kind of really bad movies from the 80s that I was kind of thinking this movie was originally about. Okay, there's a movie called Creature, which is like the most unimaginative alien movie title ever. But it was... Since alien. Yeah. But it was one of those... It was kind of one of those alien knockoffs called Creature, and it's basically the same thing. Except uh, this alien could infect you, and so the, 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 the hero of this movie is essentially this, uh, this, this woman who gets raped by the alien. And so this whole movie, she's kind of gestating this alien fetus inside of her, and so she kind of gets corrupted by it, so where she really wants to preserve it, like the alien has a self So she's like, she becomes an alien giving birth to another alien, so she, now she's on the alien side. So this whole, it, it's, this, it's this kind of body horror movie where it's about this woman with this alien pregnancy, and so as the alien grows, she gets more powerful, and people are getting killed by a pregnant woman. It's kind of fucked up. Anyway. That's kind of what's going on here, where she's, like, running through the... They made a whole movie about that, basically, where she's running through the ship, and she's like, I know what I'll do. If you remember, Charlize Theron has a lifeboat, or this, this room, and in the room there's this robotic surgical thing that can perform any operation, right? Was I alone in this? No. Nope. Okay, okay, so she goes into the, into the surgical suite, because apparently Charlize doesn't keep her room locked. No. She's only the captain of the ship. She's one of the captains of the ship. I don't know. So she goes in there, and she starts mashing on the pad, and it's like, please state the nature of your medical emergency. I want a cesarean. And she's like, I need a cesarean, like, right fucking now. And this is great. I did not expect this. The surgical unit goes, I'm sorry. This unit is only programmed to service male patients. Please seek medical attention immediately. Which it might have been an interesting twist if we found out Charlize Theron had a dick. Yeah, actually, that was I was like, is that a plot point? Is like Charlize Theron a kind of a dude? Oh my god, Charlize is a guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was like, did we just pull a sleep sleepaway camp here? Like, no, that's not what it is. So like immediately, I'm like, what? <laughs> the surgical unit is only programmed for men, because it would have been so much harder to program female operations. Or the female anatomy in this robot? I... But the real question is, why would Charlize Theron have a surgical unit in her room programmed only to service male patients? What? I... Maybe she did have a dick. I don't know. Deep Wang! Like... Like, it, 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 doesn't, it makes less than no sense. It's like... But I figure I would have heard about it because she and Idris Elba went to get it on and something tells me that if Idris Elba had a crying game experience, you'd tell you'd just seen it, yeah, yeah. It. Just... You'd be like, listen, folks. Okay, it's so... more fucked up than anything going on in that shit. Or maybe he swings that way. I don't know. But like, um, weird, like... So she she instead goes like okay not a cesarean let's it, it, there's a foreign body in my yeah in there's my there's stomach. a there's a foreign invasive body massive abdominal trauma just get it, it get it out get it out so she gets in the fucking surgical suite jamming fucking syringes into her thighs like she's from fucking uh oh what game do you do that a lot in uh like like fucking Bioshock she's like ah, 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 ah. so she's jamming fucking needles into her into her flesh. And she gets down there, and she gets like all she gets kind of situated in the surgical unit, all right. So then the uh, immediately, like I'm just I'm laughing, I'm li I'm just laughing uproariously in, in the theater. And in fact, I remember, a lot of people were laughing in the theater because it got worse. It gets it gets so much dumber because she gets in the pod, and these robot arms just immediately cut her open. Well, no, 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 no. They they first off, the surgical unit doesn't detect that she's a woman. Which you'd think would be kind of one of the basic operations for a unit that's programmed only to service men. It doesn't detect that she obviously has woman parts. <laughs> but trust me, it's worse. Because it's, it's, it's doing surgery on this, this person. Major invasive surgery. Major surgery. And it doesn't knock her out. No, it puts, it a, lo it puts a local 
on her stomach, and then this like whips her open with a laser. It just zips her open, grabs these giant tongs, yeah. goes in, yanks it out. Yanks her fucking uterus out. And then it's, there's like this alien fucking squid penis Just thing. leaves it dangling up there. Leaves it hanging up here. She has to grab the umbilical cord yeah. like it's a tag on her shirt and just rip it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like she rips this thing out of her body like it's a fucking loose string on your t-shirt. She's like, yeah. ah! She pulls it out enough. And yeah, it's a loose string on her shirt. And she's just, oh! <laughs> That's the point. I am just falling in the aisles laughing. Just how ridiculous this all is. And then it takes a staple gun. Yeah, it takes just, a... <laughs> there's no internal damage that needs to get fixed. No. It just takes this big fuck off staple gun. And it's like... She's like... This thing is not programmed to administer general anesthetic. At all. There's no, there's no internal injury. It doesn't even like give her like a rawhide stick and is like bite down on this. <laughs> there's no internal injuries. You could just staple her back up. No, you can just whip. Go. You can just whip out a woman's fucking uterus and staple the bitch. That's a cesarean. That's how medicine works, right? Right. So, I'm just, I'm just rolling. I'm like, this is so fucking stupid. <laughs> I, how does the machine not know this? All right, so now she's got this uh, alien fetus like dangling over her face, and it's like some kind of squid. Yeah, it pretty much is. It's a, yeah, it's a squid yeah. thing. Okay, so it's like it's like thrashing around, and she flops out of the surgical unit. She's just had like four pounds of shit ripped out of her stomach, and she's probably got massive internal bleeding. But no, she's running through the ship, and she's like, "Oh God, my fucking eyes!" So I'm like, "Well, you had a bad day, right?" So. Uh, so she's, she runs the fuck out of there. And she runs, just kind of stumbles into a room where she sees Mr. Wayland, who, this was actually telegraphed really early on, I think, where she's like, where uh, Fassbender's like talking to him or some shit. Anyway, so Mr. Wayland, who's like really old and decrepit right now, is actually on the ship and nobody knew about this. So nobody offers to help her up or like help her get major medical care. They're just like, ah, oh, you're good. How you doing? I don't know, pretty good. I just had a cesarean that was like a, basically like a coat hanger job in a back alley thing, so I'm good. So Mr. Whalen's like, oh, the, the, the reason we came here is because I'm dying, and I want to talk to my creator before I die. So we're going. All right, we're going. So they go, and they put Mr. Whalen, who still looks fucking ridiculous in his old age makeup. But she's like, there's only death there, and he's just like, so? Yeah. She's like, but, and he goes, well, you want to come too? And she's like, uh, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, she, she's, like, everyone, even Fassbender, who's, like, working with Mr. Whalen this whole time, knows that, like, there's just weird fuck-off alien shit in there. It turns into fucking penises and, like... Which is, there's no explanation as to why... Fassbender infected the guy scientist, or why he was really interested... Except to see what happens, really. Or why he was interested in the, the squid baby inside of... She never mentions the squid baby to anybody. She'd be like, look, there's weird shit down there. I just pulled, like, a six-pound squid fucking thing out of me. Now, she doesn't bring that up. There's no explanation for it. It's just like, eh, yeah, well... And by the way, this whole movie, the second half of the movie, she is running around with massive abdominal trauma... I'm guessing serious abdominal internal bleeding. Every few steps she gives like an oh and then, whatever. And she has just brute force, no education whatsoever, just jammed syringes full of anonymous, unidentified painkillers into her thighs. Like literally five syringes worth. She is just like fucking shotgunned into her into her body. She's popping painkillers like crazy. Does she act at all stoned? No. She, she acts perfectly lucid and rational this whole time when she should just be fucking singing. She, she should be so stoned. Because I've been on general anesthesia. I've been on some hardcore painkillers before. You're not in any mood to go running around dealing with shit. You just either want to sleep or just kind of fool around and watch TV. I don't care if there is an alien menace. She should be so high at this point that she shouldn't even be moving. 
that's another minor, I guess, minor nitpick that she shouldn't even be walking at this point. You know, she should be in intensive care. So they put Mr. Wayland in the mantis suit. We both said the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Mantis. Yeah, so they like they put him in like this powered, not armor, but like a powered suit that lets him walk. To which I would just ask, why don't you just wheel him? Like, put him in a wheelchair and wheel him around. I don't know. I don't know. So they go there, and uh, they they there's a there's an alien that's still alive. It's in like a stasis pod, a lot like the human stasis pods. And so they pop the fucking thing open, and you know they're all gathered around. And Waylon is like, uh, let's ask it, ask it. Uh, I don't even remember. Like, ask it if it can save me. Uh, ask it if it can like give me more life. And the scientist is like, ask it where it comes from. Ask it why it made us and why it wants to kill us. And they're like, shut up. You shut up. You shut up. And so, like, um, uh, the robot starts talking to it in its own language. And in response, the alien, like, picks him up, snaps his neck, rips his head off, and, like, kicks it like a fucking soccer ball. And then it kills everyone else. So I'm like, wow, that was anticlimactic. Fuck you. All right. So, um, the, for, somehow, the critically injured, stoned-off-her-ass woman... Manages to outrun the alien beast. It doesn't really chase her, but like somehow manages to get out of the ship, run back to the ship. Like she's like seriously, she was. Well, no. During this time, uh, for some reason, oh, yeah, yeah. again, the scientists decide to open up the doors, and they see the burned scientist yeah. from earlier, and they're just like, "Let's see if anything has changed with him." Yeah. So no, they, well, they hear something. They're like, "I hear something out there." So they open the door. And they see the chart to a fucking crisp guy who turned into an alien. And it's looking right at him. Like, it, it's probably dead, but it's like, it's, it's like, kind of like curled up in a ball. Like, on all fours, kind of looking at him. So what is the, what's the dumbest thing you could possibly think of doing aside from like, aside from just like jumping on it and having sex with it? He, he approaches it and like nudges it with his foot. Like a fucking dunce. So, of course, he nudges it with his boot. The fucking alien dude leaps up and like what what it, it like punches his fist through his head, right? So like the other dudes, they come out with guns and they start shooting it. It's impervious to bullets. It kills all of them. And eventually I think they like set it on fire and kill it again. They run over it. And they run times. over it with a fucking truck. But like the idiots, every move these guys make, stupid. You know. Um Oreo. She is she is incorrigible. Um, so, yeah, the fuck Kratos fucking... gets in the chair and is getting ready to, to fly the ship out of there. Yeah, Kratos gets in the chair, <laughs> and the ship starts to lift off. And, um, so, uh, Elizabeth is outside of the ship, and she tells the pilot, this thing is heading towards Earth, and it's gonna, somehow they know that it's gonna drop, like, chemical bombs on Earth and kill everyone. I guess. And they're like, so what do you want us to do? We don't have any weapons. Why don't they have any weapons? It would seem like a smart thing to bring on a first contact mission, maybe. I don't know. In fact, that's usually the subplot of a lot of, a lot of these movies, where, like, it's an exploration mission, but somebody brought a nuclear bomb just in case. You know, and they like the, usually it's like a race to, against time to defuse the nuclear bomb. But no, not here. They were just straight up with this alien thing. Okay. So they crash the, they crash the ship into the alien ship, and they all die. Um, now, here, here's the funny thing. Charlize Theron is on a ship. And she's not down with this plan. She's like, like, we'll nobly sacrifice ourselves for the good of humanity. And she's yeah. like, I didn't sign up for this shit. Yeah, I'm Charlize is like, fuck, fuck that. We're going back to Earth and we'll deal with it then. We're not, I'm not fucking sacrificing nothing. And so the captain's like, hey, you don't like it? You, there's, a, there's a life pod back there. You can get in there, a fucking life pod. So she's like, he's like, you got 40 seconds. So they start, they start to auger the fucking ship in. 40 seconds start to count down. Charlie's just putting on a fucking space suit. And she gets into like this, like a, almost like a, a phone booth type of escape pod. And she pops. Which her, her quarters were the escape pod. Yeah. It, it was its own separate system. And then it just pops off the ship for no reason whatsoever. Yeah, they, for some reason the life, well, there's so many, qu I was, I was actually asking the questions to you as this was going on. I'm like, th okay. This is the sequence of events. She's like, we're not crashing into nothing. Captain says, get on a life pod if you want to. And she's like, okay, I will. So she gets into the life pod. Life pod. 
phone booth phone booth sized, pops out of the ship. Okay, now. Why would her first instinct not be to go to the lifeboat with, you know, every possible uh, convenience, a separate life support system, a surgical unit? Why would she not go there? That, that, she set that up specifically so she could go there in the event things went bad. No. She goes to this life pod and launches out and crashes on the surface of the alien planet with a highly toxic atmosphere. Then, as the ship is crashing, the lifeboat pops off and crashes. crashes. I, I, I don't know. You know, like, I, I, I don't understand any of this. Because they actually, like, they establish this. They're like... Because you know they're going to get in this thing at some point, right? This life, like, I, like okay, I get it. You're going to go in this thing at some point. The surgery is going to come into play. Okay. Now, before you get started, I know there's an alien in the lifeboat. I know that. Charlize doesn't know that. Okay? So, it would have actually made sense if Charlize goes, Fuck you guys. I'm going to go to my lifeboat. Goes in the lifeboat. Alien eats her face. Off she goes, you know. That it makes and it, seriously, it's not like it's not like she was intended for something greater in this movie, because she pops out of the she pops out of the escape pod, emerges on the alien planet's surface, and then the spaceship falls on her. So like, it's not like we we developed anything plot wise or character wise with this. It would have been just as well had she gone on the lifeboat and gotten eaten. I mean that. It, in fact, the it almost only... would have been comical, but at that point, I was so pissed off that I, why, why didn't she just get killed some yeah. other way? Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the the only purpose the life pod sequence served was to confuse us. There's no other reason for it because it, it it's actually something she would not do. Given given the obvious logical choice, she had a much more comfortable lifeboat. It, it makes zero sense. So, like, the ships, they crash together and they both collapse on the fucking surface of the planet, and... Oh. Oh, this is where we get stupid. Okay. The only survivor is Elizabeth, the female doctor, scientist character. Okay. Now, we forgot to mention a fairly major character element to Elizabeth here. The fact that she carries this, uh, she wears this gold cross around her neck, because faith is a major element of this character. From her father explaining, like, you know, everyone has their own gods, you know, but we believe in this. So, like, the entire time she's very protective of this cross. From from the moment when uh, uh, she's in the surgical unit and Fastbender wants to take off her necklace, she's like, "No, oh, I don't want to," and you know, everyone kind of comments that she has it. And Fassbender's actually very fascinated by this thing. Like, every conversation he has with her is like, so, you know, you, you're encountering aliens. How does this fit in with your typical Judeo-Christian beliefs, right? And so he's actually, you know, he's very, he wants to understand this. I kind of want to understand it, too, because, honestly, well, we'll get to that in a minute. But, um, so, uh, she's, she's kind of, like, passed out. She's tired on the alien planet, and she's like, I can't do it anymore. And then... The uh, Fastbender gets on a radio because he's a robot. Even though he's been had his head ripped off, he can still talk. So he's like, he's like, are you are you still alive? Are are you still there? And she's like, yeah. Well, no, she goes to the lifeboat first. Okay, so she, she goes, goes to the lifeboat. She goes she goes to the lifeboat, which crashed on the planet as well. She she notices like blood next to the next to the life pod, which isn't like, ever a good thing, and so she comes up and it's a giant tentacly thing. Yeah, this thing got huge. This thing got like filled the room. This fucking uh, alien sex tentacle beast. And then and then Kratos pops in cuz why not? Cuz he somehow survived the spaceship crash. Cuz he survived and has a thing for Elizabeth. And so he tries killing her and she opens up the door and the tentacle thing does more hentai stuff to well, What's funny is uh, Fastbender warns her. He's like are you, are you in the lifeboat? You gotta get out because it's coming for you. Why? 
so yeah, the 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 alien goes in there, meets the other alien, and the big alien kills the Kratos alien, and of course fucks it in the mouth, so it it's gonna you know give birth eventually to the traditional alien we see in the movie Alien. I said Alien a lot. So yeah, so the the lifeboat isn't safe because there's that big fucking alien in it, which is essentially like it's it's really like a let's say a two thousand pound face hugger, which is really what it turned into. So she escapes from there, and then Fastbender says, "You get you know, are you still alive? Oh good. Um, could you help me out? I had my head ripped off. Um, by the way, there's other spaceships on this planet. I can fly a spaceship back to Earth for you." And she goes, "Okay." So she goes, gets his head, and. The, uh, the head kind of rolls over and looks at her and sees she's still wearing the golden cross and goes, after all this time, you still believe, don't you? And she's like, damn straight I do. And I just, I, that was the point where I just about jumped up and yelled, fuck you. Because this whole, I know they were trying to raise some kind of specter of like uh, uh, science versus religion bullshit, which they never really got anywhere in that argument. Because honestly, Never. it honestly makes the Jesus freak look stupid. Because Jesus in no way had anything to do with what's going on here. Like, nothing. She wasn't saved by some kind of hand of God. Nothing miraculous happened on this entire trip. Quite the opposite, in fact. And in no way is her faith ever rewar rewarded in this entire movie. In no plus, way. Plus the fact that alien creationism kind of kills the idea of this Judeo-Christian God creating them. Yeah, so, you know, the, the existence of aliens pretty much precludes the entire thesis of Christianity. You know, it's, you know, God created man in his image according to the Bible, so who, what the fuck, you know, like, this, there's no way this fits in. So, honestly, at the first sight of aliens, you'd think she'd whip the fucking cross off and throw it in a fucking gutter. But they're a hundred percent human. But they're a hundred percent DNA sample. <laughs> Bullshit. So I this the philosophy is taught by five year olds. Yeah, I mean, it, 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 it's it's this movie that Oreo, please. Oreo's getting restless, so we're gonna have to wrap it up pretty quick here. It's this movie that thinks it's so much smarter and deeper than it really is. But it's so much dumber. It's way dumber. The characters are way dumber. This has this movie has nothing to say, nothing to show us, and nothing interesting to explore. You know, in in, in you know Arthur C. Clarke. If you ever read the Rama series of Arthur C. Clarke novels, it's on its face kind of similar to this, where some you know they find signs of an alien civilization, and these this team of astronauts goes there to contact, essentially, their makers. You know, that's, they basically go there to meet God, who's an alien. So that entire novel series is about, you know, the crisis of faith and the crisis of science that these characters go through as they're on this lifelong journey across the solar system to meet who may well have engineered the human race and every other sentient race in the galaxy who they also meet. I was like, you know, if, if a better writer had gotten a hold of this story, like Arthur C. Clarke, this would have been a really fascinating movie. Instead, they were content just to make it an alien creature feature with nothing substantive to say, and in fact is actively insulting to the intelligence of anyone who tries to think about it critically. Am I, am I far off? I, it's an insult to anyone that actually does try to think about these issues these philosophical and theological issues. Because they're weighty issues. They're issues worth exploring. In a smarter movie, they might well have explored that, but instead, they think by just bringing the issue up and then actively contradicting it, that it's somehow deep. And it's not. It's just dumb. It's a very pretty, well-shot, stupid fucking movie. Let's talk about another Ridley Scott movie, Blade Runner. Yeah. And, and how it was... The themes were about consciousness and the idea of artificial intelligence. Yeah, well, the concept of what is a soul, the yes. concept of what it's like to meet one's creator and how disappointing that, in fact, can be. Yes, and in this movie, it's, it's David is asking her about, about, you know, why are you still believing in this? And she gives this, well, you're just a robot, so you don't understand. Yeah, I mean, 
when in fact this robot has to please it. I think the robot is more human and has more of a soul than you lady and if that was in fact the point we were supposed to get from this movie I might actually applaud it for having some focus there but it that's not the point you know we're yeah I, I, that's not it I mean I, I was like a smarter filmmaker might have made a better movie exploring that very feature where in fact there's several moments where there's that 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 ingenious thought kind of peeks its head out where where David is like, you know, uh, why did you... He, he asks the scientist, well, why did humans create me? And the guy goes, because we could. And the robot says, well, imagine how disappointed you'd be if you met your creator and he said that. And that was, like, really the best part of the movie, I thought, was that conversation. Now, did they, did they do anything with it? I, I honestly think that scene kind of happened by mistake. The scene, <laughs> the scene of that brilliance basically was accidental. You know, well, we're seeing two different Ridley Scotts. One was subtle and brilliant. The other was ham-fisted and retarded. Yeah. So, you know, honest to God, guys, I, I uh, there was never a movie I wanted to, to like more that I hated more, except, you know, really going back to Star Wars. Uh, remarkably bad. It, it, colossally bad. Will probably go down as one of the worst movies I've seen this year. Definitely the biggest letdown so far I've seen this year. It's 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 definitely a lock for the most disappointing flick I've seen all year. Yes, by far. But I really don't think anything anything is going to top that. I mean, there, there's going to be technically worse movies or movies that. But if we're talking about expectations and what and how much it it pissed me off, then this one is going to be a contender. Uh, there shouldn't be any ones that piss me off worse. I hope not. <laughs> Incredibly bad. Uh, my advice, do not see this movie. I, really, I wouldn't even see it just to laugh at it, because it's just, it's, it's I, uh, unwatchably bad. If, it, if it I seems were not, to go on forever. If, okay, if I were not kind of committed to watching the movie, to watch it for, to, to review it, I probably would have walked out. It's that bad. It, 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 I've seen, I saw people walking out. People walked out of this movie. Uh, I saw three or four. Uh, yeah, and I saw just by the end people were laughing. By, yeah. the, by the time the, the alien came out, you could swear it was almost a comedy. Yeah. What should have been the, oh god, this is so fucking awesome. Yeah. What, it was like, I never heard, I mean, it, it was just... People were just humiliated that they were watching what was on screen. Yeah, it, 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 there, there were people walking out, or they were pretty much hells with derisive laughter, uh, especially near the end. The surgical scene was hilarious. It really, honestly, uh, it was probably more hilarious than the uh, the scene in uh, uh, Breaking Dawn. The cesarean scene in Breaking Dawn. We've actually seen two movies now with like the most hilarious surgical scenes, both involving the removal of a fetus. Somehow a vampire biting off the the uterus. There was more sound there was, surgical technique in that scene. That was more... I don't know what, but it wasn't as stupid. It was <laughs> not... It shouldn't fact, have been. No, it was not, in fact, as stupid because they were actually, like, uh, uh... There was, like, a natural anesthetic in the vampire venom, so, like... Like... I'm not saying much more. I'm saying mm, mm, that much. At least Edward could tell the difference between a man and a woman. <laughs> at least one hopes. Yeah. In, uh, just wow. We this is this is us stunned. We can we cannot believe. Any closing thoughts? I didn't think it could be that bad. I didn't either. I didn't either. Really. And I mean, this is a guy who saw Alien Resurrection. This is a guy who saw. Alien vs. Predator. This is worse. Pretty. It looked pretty, but it's way worse. It's it's beyond bad. It's insulting. That's that's really what it comes down to. Where like, it's it's not that funny kind of bad. It goes past that funny kind of bad and just gets, you get pissed off. Um. Yeah. It's all I got, man. Avoid this movie. I I hate to be that guy, but avoid it at all costs. See you next time, guys.